cold-blooded Greg Popovich, oh, you want to go home? Okay, I'm deporting you. Magic Johnson now should make a very strong offer for Kawhi Leonard. What could T.O. come back and do in the NFL that would change one person's mind? Kawhi Leonard didn't want to play in San Antonio because Pop called him out. And so what does San Antonio do? They trade him to the one NBA franchise you know he doesn't want to play for. The one NBA franchise not in the United States, Canada, Toronto. DeMar DeRozan lied to? And petty, grudge-holding Popovich sends Kawhi packing. And you'll want to know why I defend stars. Let's go back in time with Toronto. Their best player, Chris Bosh, left via free agency. Tracy McGrady left via free agency. Vince Carter was upset. He demanded a trade. They traded him. DeMar DeRozan re-signed and wanted to be in Toronto. So the likelihood of you getting someone to come there on their own fruition, free agency, oh, I, Toronto's the place I want to be. Mm -hmm. And you being able to get guys of that ilk and si re-sign them is saying something. I told you from the start, I'm not a DeMar DeRozan fan and never have been. I'm not being 2020 hindsight hypocritical about this. I've said it a thousand times on national TV. I just don't love him. He, he's not even a full blown star to me. He's like a near star. He's that guy who's always gonna frustrate you because in the biggest moments, he's not gonna show up. Toronto is going to be better next year with Kawhi, with Danny Green, they got much better defensively. They already were a really good team defensively. They got rid of a remnant from being swept the last two years in the playoffs. DeMar was their leader. I can only come to one conclusion. The general manager, Masai Ujiri, who's a good, great general manager, he did not want to build long-term around DeMar DeRozan. Toronto was saying, we won 59 games last year and it wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. We are going to switch out our best player who plays the same position as Kawhi Leonard, essentially, is scoring wing, Yes. with a better version of our best player. Everything at basketball, Kawhi Leonard is better than DeMar DeRozan. I'm here to tell you that if he does show up in Toronto to play, where he does not want to play, the likelihood of him playing 82 games is very low because you're going to hear that he's hurt. He's going to be hurt much of the year next what year. What about unhappy? He'll be all of the above. Yeah, they could trade for Kawhi, but what Kawhi is going to do from this point, I've been very consistent as far as the message. He wanted to go to Los Angeles, that being the Clippers and the Lakers. I didn't think any other team, regardless of what type of talent, coaching staff, or where they were, had a chance of landing Kawhi based on the information that I was getting. He doesn't have much of a say on where he will play next season all he could do is cool the market by make it very clear wherever i play next season will have no impact on where i'm playing in two seasons and he in has two, made that very in clear. two seasons i'm playing in los angeles and that's why it would appear the celtics and the sixers maybe even the lakers didn't make their best offer if i'm magic johnson Knowing that Jerry West is going to use LeBron against him in the pitch for Kawhi. Um, my feeling is Magic Johnson now should make a very strong offer for Kawhi Leonard. If you get Kawhi and LeBron, you don't need Kuzma and Ingram. I would move a first-round pick. I'd give up one of those two forwards, and I'd consider giving up anybody else they want in the roster. Magic Johnson says, I'm not going to – I'll do a deal – I'm a businessman. I've done deals before, but I'm not going to do a bad deal where well, there's nothing that's 100%. So, but I'm willing to go on record and say there's a 98.54% chance that Kawhi Leonard is donning the purpling gold. Mm. Right now, I promise you, if Magic had pulled off the deal for Kawhi, you would be doing a victory dance over there and you would predict that the Lakers would win the championship next year. We've seen Would you not? Would you not predict no, it? Yes, you would. Yeah. If they make this trade, they get LeBron and Kawhi. And where's your depth? You're not, as good as those two players are, you're not beating Golden State without any depth. You need some depth. Don't look at me. Tell him that. I think it would have been gone. So, oh. so I think they did the right thing. Next summer, it is going to be a heck of a fight. I think the Lakers get it. 
But it's going to be a heck of a fight between Magic Johnson and LeBron James and the logo, Jerry West. Because the logo is going after Kawhi Hart. Kawhi Leonard's going to play for the Lakers. I believe that. He's going to play for the Lakers no matter when he's going to get there. Toronto, even if they do trade for him, they can't hold him. All right, he's got one more year left on his contract. He can leave. They can't protect him. There's nothing that they can do. That is the desire of Kawhi Leonard. For the Lakers, you can spin a happy face on this. And you can say, okay, as long as we get him next year, we now we keep anything. all our guys. Yeah. Now, I've said how I think it's harder for them to bring in a third star if they don't have Kawhi already in the building, if they have to sign Kawhi Leonard in the offseason and bring in somebody else. I also think that you you don't know how many years you have as LeBron, as the best player in the league. I think a lot of players would tell you LeBron James is not that easy to live with. Yeah, he's a supernova. Uh, he is a supernova, yeah. and he can be moody and a little unpredictable on social media. And he can be passive aggressive, and he can sort of subtly point fingers at players on his team, and you wonder, what's he saying that? What's, what's that about? He can point fingers at his coaching staff. A lot of things can go on with LeBron that are hard to live with. They, they shake up your world. He never got over this league rejecting him. And I believe that part of, maybe a small part, but part of his Hall of Fame protest is that he's still mad at the league that rejected him. Because remember, Pete Carroll sent him home and he thought prematurely. That was in August, that was August 26th of 2012. You're never gonna find anything that, that, that as far as competitive and, mm -hmm. and being around, being around yes. the guys yeah. all the time. Right. There's nothing like being that. Being in that spot. No, no, yeah. there's nothing, by any metric, even no matter what you think of, by any metric, at worst case, he's the third greatest receiver all time. Okay. You would think, mm -hmm. after accomplishing all of that, it's still not enough mm -hmm. because he's not getting to leave on his mm -hmm. terms. I know this about the National Football League. When your distraction or your the headache that you cause mm -hmm. outweighs your talent, mm -hmm. then nobody is going to be willing to, to offer you a job anymore. And with T.O., as you get diminishing skills and as you get older, they're like, why would we put up with that when we know there's going to be a headache. What is it that T.O. can accomplish? And maybe this is only for him. Maybe he wants to prove to himself that he can still play. But what could T.O. come back and do to the NF in the NFL that would change one person's mind about who and what Terrell is? Anytime these guys talk about, I want to play in the NFL, I want to play in the NFL, my position always is, if you really want to play, go play in Canada. Prove it to me. And he's doing that. He's putting his actions potentially where his mouth has been, I'd have no problem with it. Once you're Howard Stern, you don't go back and do weekends in Edmonton radio. I'm sorry, but a gold jacket guy going to play <laughs> for the Edmonton Eskimos? It feels sad to me. Right. I don't want to yeah. see Bono and the Edge at the TikTok Inn down the street. I'd be like, they were at the Rose Bowl. That's pathetic.